if you let these things get on top of you. It's time to pack it in. All the signs in Barbados suggested humiliation. England had just been thrashed by a West Indian board 11 in Grenada, and the West Indies hadn't been beaten at the Kensington Oval for 59 years. I think personally it's a great opportunity to break the mould and make some history. You know, the West Indies have got a very strong record here. Oh, well, that record's got to come to an end sometime. It'd be nice if, if we brought it to an end. Fighting talk, but no one seriously believed that this England team would even get out of the stalls. It's now 40 years since Barbados's favourite son, Sir Garfield Sobers, first played for the West Indies. The island was already in festive mood with the celebrations coming to a head during the fourth test match. None of the great test players who had gathered to honour Sir Gary had ever seen the West Indies lose here. I said we're going to whoop you. Real bad. For the locals, defeat wasn't even a remote possibility. Motivational side of things shouldn't be a problem. Um, we've got a big travelling support here. People are obviously playing for their test futures with a new chairman of selectors being installed in April. Um, so from the motivation point of view, that shouldn't be a problem. It looked more like the Kennington Oval than the Kensington Oval. Over 5,000 English fans combined a holiday on the beach with the test match. And the ovation they gave England's batsmen, Mike Atherton and Alex Stewart, seemed to have the desired effect. Their first task was to bury the ghost of Trinidad once and for all. is absolutely perfect in his technique. Stewart um, hits a little bit across the ball, but I think that Alex Stewart is about your best player to fix, to rail quick, because he moves back and across and take a look. And that's how you have to play real quick. You've got to move back and across, take a look, and then decide which way you're going from there. But if you get out there and stick your big front foot right down the wicket, then you've committed yourself. And when you're playing against bowlers like Courtney Ambrose, you don't have much time to adjust. Spurred on by the tremendous support, Mike Atherton and Alex Stewart put on 171, their highest partnership of the tour. That's it. Alex Stewart's got his 100. Kensington rising to him. Not a bad way to celebrate your 31st birthday, but once again, England's batsmen failed to build on that start. Robin Smith made 10 before the arch tormentor Kirtley Ambrose blew the tail away. What Mike Atherton would give for an Ambrose of his own. A captain's job is difficult enough in the field, and throughout the tour, the form of England's bowlers had added to his problems. At last, things were about to change. It's gone on the edge, and it's easily taken by Atherton. That third slip, and Richie Richardson's gone. Oh, that's through, he's got him. Jack Russell takes the catch this time. It's nice to do well, uh, bowl well, and to get the, the, the edges. It's some days you walk off the field having thought you bowl well and not got the edges, but it was nice that they did today. Angus Fraser, around whom Atherton's attack had been built, took 8 for 75, the best ever bowling figures by an Englishman against the West Indies, and proved beyond doubt that he's back to his best after an injury which seriously threatened his career three years ago. To Graham Hick, at least, Trinidad seemed a million miles away. It's away and out! Tufnell's underneath it, and he's taken the catch. England had a lead of 51, but there had been another blemish in the field, and again it was Chanderpol who was let off the hook. However, the writing was on the wall as far as the locals were concerned. Their proud record was now under threat. Another record and an outstanding achievement. 
Alex Stewart added 143 to his 118 in the first innings to become the first Englishman ever to score a century in each innings against the West Indies. Graham Thorpe continued his progression with 84 and Graham Hick made 59 when Mike Atherton declared. The realisation had now dawned in all of us that England really could achieve what had seemed to be an impossible dream. The West Indies needed 446 to win or, more realistically, to bat for over a day to save the match. He's out. The West Indies have lost the wicket. Jimmy Adams goes and Carrick makes the breakthrough. Gone with him. Night Watchman out. Graham Hick takes the catch. I mean, I'd not, not really said much to the players. I, I always felt that they were a group of people who wouldn't get too down if things went bad. We obviously bear these things in mind when you select the side. And I felt that there were some quite strong characters in the team. And I felt that with it being uh, young lads who've got test careers to make, I felt even if things went badly, they would always be trying to improve their game, work hard at their game. And so it proved. Got him! Success for Phil Tufnell. That's what he's been waiting for all day. The way the crowd kind of behaved, they behaved brilliantly for us all match. The support was fantastic. As there were two or three wickets to fall on the evening, uh, I think everybody realised what was about to happen. So uh, at the actual moment, I think, you know, it, it was kind of sinking in well before that. makes no mistake and another five wicket haul for Andrew Caddick we can try this match baby we are losing we are in the war already that's gone high in the air Alex Stewart's the man underneath it and takes the catch and isn't he pleased about that the eighth wicket goes down <laughs> Tufnell. West Indies have lost their ninth wicket. When the last wicket was about to fall, it was very difficult to keep your concentration because all the English crowd were kind of milling onto the outfield and you knew we were about to kind of make it happen. And then when it did happen, everybody rushed on and it was all a bit of a blur. And, you know, it was that kind of crazy half hour. And that's it. All over. England have won. It's great because you know we've been through some tough times and lost three test matches um had had some tough hours particularly the one at trinidad so to come back from that i think everybody was quite proud of what we achieved you know showed a great deal of character and resilience um uh, it's just a great feeling and when you've got that kind of team spirit and togetherness it's, it's a nice time beats the hell out of losing uh, scenes in the dressing room afterwards were, were nice scenes we were as focused as we should be um, we, we didn't bat as well as we should have. We bowled quite a few no balls and that really set us back. And um, England capitalised on that. England's remarkable performance transformed the mood of the tour virtually overnight. From the depths of despair, a feeling of euphoria overcame all of us who were lucky enough to be able to say, I was there. The demand for photographs is as intense as ever, with the press corps still desperate for that special picture to record the moment of history, and the captain's more than happy to oblige.